Have you ever wanted to shred body fat? Well, in this content, I'm going to explain the science behind a few molecules that were discussed in a Joe Rogan Experience podcast involving Dr. David Sinclair. We'll discuss metformin, DNP, and a new molecule that Dr. Sinclair is developing. So let's tune in together. In this piece, Dr. Sinclair explains the mechanism for metformin, which opens a discussion for the fat burning molecules in a little bit. So in the cell, right? So let's zoom down into a cell. A cell okay. is a bag. We break through the membrane, the bag out of, uh, out of bag, and now we're in liquid. Now we're swimming around, and there are these weird shapes that are floating around. They look a little bit lip bike, uh, look like um, mic mic and ikes. Is that what they mic and ikes? Mic and ikes. Little little tubes. The candy. candy. Oh, Mike and Ike's. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm Australian, so okay. right, I talk yeah, about yeah. other other things, but Cadbury chocolate and stuff. Okay, these are little, um, we little don't tubes. We know Cadbury chocolate. Do you do? Yeah, sure. It's famous. Okay, got it. Cadbury eggs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the Cadbury eggs uh, float around the cell. They they look more like an extended little tube. Okay. And they 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 are what we use to make most of our energy. When we eat sugar um, or aminos, they get transported into the mitochondria. And they get converted into energy. So how does that work? I'm glad you asked. The the mitochondria have them have another couple of membranes. So now we're going to pierce through the outer one, and now we're going to swim in between the the inner and the outer membrane. What's happening is that that's really acidic. Uh, it's a lot of uh, protons in there, and the cells uh, pushing them into there, and that builds up this gradient of pH. So it's acidic, and then those protons that are in there. They want to get back inside that little uh, that little thing, and so they they can't get through. But there are these little holes, uh, which is a protein called ATP synthase. And when they bust through that hole, it's like a propeller, like a hydroelectric uh, generator on a dam. And they shoot through, and this thing spins around and makes a chemical called ATP, which the body needs to to survive that's where we get all our energy if we don't have atp or this little spinny thing we're dead in less than 30 seconds you take cyanide that's what it does it blocks that process oh wow so it's needed for life and it seems the more you have of that the better in this segment dr sinclair explains some of the details of mitochondria and how having protons move from the intermembrane space that's the space between the inner and outer membranes of the mitochondrion to the matrix or the inside of the mitochondrion allows the rotation of the ATP synthase. The rotation of the ATP synthase leads to the generation of cellular energy known as ATP. However, the mitochondria needs to pump these protons back out of the matrix into the intermembrane space where they belong. And it does that through some complex molecular mechanisms that are possible by molecules created when our cells take in sugar or fat molecules. These sugar and fat molecules primarily are converted to NADH, which is used by the mitochondrion to pump the aforementioned protons back into the intermembrane space. That's a lot to digest, but metformin interrupts this process by partially inhibiting the process by which NADH is used to push protons back to the intermembrane space, thereby limiting ATP generation. This leads the cell to generate more mitochondria to get enough ATP for itself. Still, for us to move forward, all you need to know is that there is a proton gradient. High proton levels in the intermembrane space outside of the inner membrane and low in the matrix, the inside of the inner membrane. And as the protons move into the matrix, it generates ATP as the ATP synthase spins. But those protons need to be pumped back to their original place, which takes food energy in the form of sugar and fat molecules converted to NADH. Now back to Dr. Sinclair on the first potent fat loss molecule dinitrophenol, DNP. Now, one thing that one of my uh, companies that I'm helping uh, and I've invested in, to be honest, uh, to be transparent, is developing is a way to punch holes in that membrane so that the hydroelectric dam is less efficient. So we've got a leak in the dam. And so not all the energy is going through. So what we, th we see happen in animal studies is that they can eat more food and not gain weight. It's a perfect weight loss pill. Wow. So I want to help cure obesity as that well. That sounds very Dr. Oz-like, though. 
It's, wow. a, it's a perfect way. It's a miracle. It's a miracle pill. Well, it seems it like a miracle. Like I don't believe in miracles, but I believe in good science. Mm. And in the 1920s, uh, mostly women who were uh, at, in these factories, actually it was only World War One. they were making bombs. And there was a chemical called DNP, dinitrophenol, which has this property to break ho- through this hydroelectric dam wall. Um, and w- those women were really skinny. And people didn't understand it. And they found out that if you eat this molecule, DNP, you shed weight. And this started to be sold uh, How were they eating hospitals. the molecule? Well, they're breathing it in, and that was sufficient. Really? Yeah. So then it became sold. It became one of the best-selling drugs. Yeah, I think it was 1928, something like that. Um, and it, people thought that, that this was the end of obesity. Dr. Sinclair mentions a drug that was taken in the early 1900s that led women to lose significant body fat. Well, why was that? If we go back to our understanding of the mitochondria, recall that the protons normally flow through the ATP synthase into the matrix, yet the molecule DNP creates an access way that is independent of the ATP synthase, effectively bypassing the ATP synthase, leaking protons into the matrix without the generation of cellular energy. To compensate, the mitochondrion takes up mass quantities of nutrients. Remember, fat molecules and sugar molecules, converting them to NADH to frantically pump protons back out of the matrix. This effectively requires mass amounts of nutrients, thereby calling on fat cells and the liver to dump fat and sugar into the blood to feed these affected cells. Okay, sounds ideal, but there is a problem. And, uh, you know, people were partying in the streets, basically. But the problem is when you bust holes through that membrane, it generates, as a byproduct, heat. And people took too much because they wanted to get thin really quickly, and they overheated, and some of them died. And that led to the FDA FDA Act. And this is why we have drug regulation. That's why? One of the main reasons, yeah, they shut that down because it was killing people. How many people died? Oh, not that many, uh, but still, but one is too but many. But it's an overdose issue. Right. And you can still get it on the black market. They used to give it mm. to Russians, apparently, in World War II to stay warm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but if you're wondering, David, why are you making a drug that's going to kill people? Well, actually, the, the chemists are working and have made molecules that are sensitive to this acidity. And if it gets too low, it'll turn itself off. DNP in too high of concentrations is deadly as the body cooks itself not the most pleasant death. So how does that happen? Well, simply punching the holes into the inner membrane of the mitochondrion leaks protons, the necessary exchange of electrons from the mitochondrial proteins to pump protons means there's a sudden uptick in the number of reactions going on in the mitochondrion. Each reaction releases heat as a product. So if all of your mitochondria suddenly speed up their proton pumping, there is an equal increase in the number of reactions to facilitate that pumping. And these reactions release heat, thereby increasing the temperature within the cells. And compound that trillions of times over, you actually cook from the inside out. That said, I'm not sure about the science behind Dr. Sinclair's DNP 2.0, but if it were manageable, it really would have an intense effect on weight loss. However, there may be unintended consequences that we would still need to investigate as well. Still, this is one of the most exciting propositions I've heard on the topic of a one drug to cure obesity. Will it happen? Well, it's all talk up to this point, so we'll see. If you're interested in learning more, join me as I discuss more on the mitochondria, fat loss, and other physiological topics. And with that, I'll hope to speak with you then. Bye.